Hey, I'm glad you're back. We were right in the middle of installing our hinges, so let's go get that finished up. Then we're gonna figure out a way to attach the hinge post to the legs. We're gonna make the bottom, we're gonna make the top, and then we're gonna use a little jig to drill some holes so we can assemble this thing in a variety of configurations quickly and easily. Let's go get to work. Now once the panels are mock-up assembled into one square unit, it's pretty easy to attach the hinge. So I put some lightweight clamps on here to hold everything together and this side, the hinge panel and the hinge posts are perfectly flush, lined up here and it's clamped up tight. Now before I screw on the hinge, I wanna check one thing and that's to just double check some dimensions. On the outside, corner to corner, this should be 35 inches on all three of the fixed sides. If for some reason it is not 35 inches, check the depth and make sure that the tenons are all the way into the dados that you cut. Once you've got that and you've got the unit squared up, then clamp in the hinge panel with the hinge post and if the sun and the moon and the stars are aligned correctly, this should be about 1 16th inch less than 35. And that is interestingly, right where we are. And the reason for that is because we want just a little bit of clearance over here for this panel to clear when it swings out. Once you've got everything there lined up, you can slip in your hinge. Just use a couple of pieces of blue painter's tape, position it. Okay, we'll put a screw in up here close to the top on the post side. And then we'll make sure that we've got this lined up exactly right. And then put a screw in down here towards the bottom. And now we can just throw a few more screws in. Okay, we've still got a few more screws to put in, but uh, Let's take a look now and see how we did. All right, now we will be attaching the post of the hinge panel into this dado on a temporary basis, but where it will hold it when we open the door. So don't worry about that. Right now, just get all the hinges on. You can use the same setup, do two of them on the right and two of them on the left side and you'll have all four hinge panels done, and then we can move on to the next exciting step of this project. All right, with our hinge panels complete, now we could go ahead and take down this mocked up assembly and start on the next step, but we wanna do one more thing, and that's that we need to figure out a way that the hinge panel and the hinge post can be secured inside this dado temporarily when we set the system up. Now the other dados and, uh, and tenons on the other panels will be secured in a different way. You'll see that in a few minutes, but the hinge panels, when you swing out the hinged panel, we need that panel post to stay in place. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to use this 3 16th inch lynch pin. And we're going to put it through a hole in the leg that will then go through a hole in the hinge post and secure it in place. We'll use two of these on each leg. Now to make sure we get the holes drilled in exactly the right place, I just whipped up this little jig right here. It's just some three quarter inch plywood nailed together at a 90 degree angle. And then I put it up next to a leg and measured half the depth of the dado 
and made a mark here on the jig. I extended that mark the length of the jig and then on the drill press drilled two 3 16 inch holes. This assures me I get the holes in the same place on each leg. And by the way, we're going to secure the linchpin system with hinge panels, two left legs and two right legs to take care of our four panels. So all I've got to do to drill the holes is lightly clamp this in place and use these holes as a guide and just drill through. Okay, now with the hinged panel and the hinge panel post in place, I'm going to drill this hole through the hinge panel post. And now, our linch pin will insert in this hole and keep our door from pulling out. All right, now to make the base real simple, just need two pieces of plywood, one of them 35 by 35, and the other one 35 by 32 and a half. Now I'm using some cabinet grade plywood, but you could really use any plywood you want to. I'm using this because it was left over and it had some pretty serious flaws in it. And, uh, I didn't want to use it on cabinet work, but it'll work just fine on this. Now while you're set up at the table saw to cut the base pieces, go ahead and cut the two pieces for the top. They're exactly the same size, one piece 35 by 35 and another piece 35 by 32 and a half. The only difference is make these out of half inch thick plywood. All right, now we've got our 35 by 35 panel and our 35 by 32 and a half panel. Got them butted together and I've got a 30 inch piano hinge. The only difference between this and the other hinges is this one is an inch and a half wide instead of an inch and sixteenth. The key here is to make sure that this 30 inch hinge is positioned exactly two and a half inches from this edge of the board. And then we'll put one screw in here with the hinge centered to get this end lined up. And then we'll go line up the other end. All right, after we get the one screw in down here, I'm going to come down here and line up this side. And put one screw down here to hold the panel, the uh, hinge lined up on the panel. And now we can just go and put in all the rest of the screws. With all the screws in place, this base can now be folded up for storage or unfolded for use with the large panel set up. And I'll also show you how we can use this for the small enclosure setup in a little bit. All right, we've got one more little jig that we need to make. And the first thing to do is to cut some three quarter inch plywood scrap into squares that are exactly two and a half by two and a half. And what you want to do is you want to match the height exactly to your legs. Now, as you can see, it took me several attempts to get these right, but I finally got two. So I've got those. Then I ripped a couple of scrap pieces of plywood, and we'll just go ahead and tack that together. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stack these and I'm going to drill a 5 16 inch hole through both pieces at exactly the center point. 
Okay, now with my holes drilled at the midway point, I'm gonna stand this up here in this little cradle, just midway or approximately midway, and I'm gonna tack this into place. Okay, we've got our little jig set up here, clamped down to a work table. I've got another piece of three quarter inch plywood down here just to help me hold the leg level. Just push the leg up into the jig, line up the bit with the hole that's in the guide, and drill a hole in the center of the end of the post. And we want to do that on both ends. And we just got to do that on all of the legs. All right, now that the uh, holes are drilled in all the legs, we're going to get a little bit more use out of this jig. We're going to take our base piece of plywood and in the four corners, use the same jig to drill a hole straight through. And it can go off. I've taken the stop collar off the drill bit because this hole can actually go all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to drill these holes like this in all four corners. Now be sure to use that jig and drill those same 5 16 inch holes in all the corners of the two pieces of half inch plywood that were cut to form the top. After that, the construction is pretty much complete other than a few details. Let's go take a look now at how the whole system goes together in its various configurations.
Well, we're running out of time, but just a couple of little details before we go. You may have noticed that I inserted a dowel through a hole that I drilled between the two door panels. That way, when the system is stacked, these door panels will actually act as one unit. The other thing you want to make sure to do, of course, is install your air filters so you get passive air circulation through the unit. But you're going to need a way to hold those filters in place. I'm just going to take a scrap of wood, drill a hole, put a screw in it, and use it like a turnbuckle where I can just turn it to hold that filter in place. Real simple. The other thing I want to do is pick up a couple of real inexpensive screen door handles and put them here to make it easier to open and close the doors. Now the cut list and the complete material list for all the hardware will be available at highlandwoodworking.com in their library section. If you wish to download any of that stuff, go there and you'll be able to get everything. So there we go, a dust-free, knockdown, cost-effective finishing enclosure for your shop. If you wind up building one of these for your shop, I hope you find it just as useful as I have found it in my shop. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please subscribe to this channel. And if you need any tools or supplies, please surf on over to highlandwoodworking.com. Thanks again for watching. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.